This is Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Let's get into it. Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King Jr., Sojourner Truth, Rosa Parks, W.E.B. Du Bois, Gwendolyn Berry. Now, most of those names you're familiar with, but probably that last one, Gwendolyn Berry. I mean, it's a beautiful name, but why would that name be on the list with all those other people? Well, guys, I don't know if you know this, but we have a brand new civil rights hero amongst us, right? Now, if we shorten the name, it becomes Gwen Berry. It it slides off the tongue real nicely. But Gwen Berry is now to be held in the same regard as Harriet Tubman and Martin Luther King Jr. and Sojourner Truth and Rosa Parks and W.E.B. Du Bois and everybody else that you could possibly think of that is a civil rights hero. Because this is a name now. Gwen Berry is a name that we will forever remember as one of the greatest civil rights activists of our time. So if you don't know why Gwen Berry is now this special person in U.S. history, let me go ahead and kind of break it down for you. So on Saturday, June the 26th, so this is last Saturday, Gwen Berry was competing at the U.S. Olympic Trials. Yes, the United States Olympic Trials. That is a very important point that we'll get more into a little bit later. And she was competing in the amazing event that we've all been waiting for, that we're just waiting for the primetime coverage of, and that's women's hammer throw okay so Gwen Berry she placed third at the uh, qualifications at the trial so she did qualify for the Olympics for the U.S. team but since she only got third in her own country it's not likely that she will do any anything significant once the Tokyo games roll around uh, because that's international competition and she couldn't even win her own country but hey she placed third she was on the podium it means she's on the team but when she went over to the podium to stand there and get her picture taken and do all those different things to to signify her third place finish, the national anthem of the United States of America began to play. Now, they don't play the national anthem at the U.S. trials for every, you know, competition that's finished. It's just something that they play on a schedule, okay? Now, when the national anthem began playing, the first and second place finishers turned toward the flag. They put their hand over their heart because they're respectful human beings, but not Gwen Berry. Gwen Berry decided to turn her body away from the flag. She never crossed her heart, and she actually eventually held up a T-shirt over her head, and the T-shirt read, Activist Athlete. Okay? Now, the thing about it is, Gwen Berry somehow thought that this was all a setup. Okay? So this is an, an actual quote from her. Okay? I feel like it was a setup. I feel like they did that on purpose, and I was pissed, to be honest. I was thinking about what I should do. Eventually, I just stayed there and just swayed. I put my shirt over my head. It was real disrespectful. I know they did that on purpose, but it'll be all right. I see what's up. It was funny because they said they were going to play it before we walked out. It just happened then. uh, It just happened that they played it when we were out there. So, you know, it's okay. I really don't want to talk about the anthem because it's not important. The anthem don't speak for me. It never has. So obviously, uh, Gwen Berry, amongst being a hero, she's also a linguist. And, you know, that's something she's also very, very good at. But Gwendolyn Berry, Gwen Berry uh, has a history of this. Okay, so according to Joe Morgan over at The Daily Wire in 2019, Berry raised her fist while on the podium at the Pan Am Games uh, another games where she was representing the United States of America, supposedly. Uh, The move led to a formal reprimand from U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee. But Berry was not suspended. She did, however, receive a 12 month probation. So here's the thing that we know. That overnight, two things became true about Gwen Berry. Two things. Number one, she became a civil rights hero, as we've already established, right? And the second is that she became the most famous hammer thrower in world history. Okay? And if you don't believe me, can you name a single other hammer thrower from any country in history? I mean, maybe that's your, that's your game. And I'm not trying to belittle hammer throwing. It's probably something that I couldn't do very well. You know, it just kind of is what it is. It's kind of a niche thing, but let's just kind of be honest about it. But I will say that there were a lot of reactions to this. I mean, this is still in the news cycle and this happened almost a week ago. So I don't know, like, has Trump not done anything this week? I mean, why are we still talking about this? But 
the reaction from people on the right and on the respectful side of the United States, uh, this is something that is seen as an affront to the country. You know, this is something akin to what Colin Kaepernick did and still does. But then there are other people that were trumpeting her as a hero immediately. But there are a lot of things to discuss here, but I want to keep this podcast short because I've dropped a lot of content on you guys recently. So I just wanted to get my uh, opinions out here about this because you guys were asking about it. But there are a lot of things that we know about Gwen Berry. Okay. The very first thing that we know about Gwen Berry is that she is not oppressed. She's not. You know how I know? Because she's an American. And America is the single greatest place, okay? And, and the most potentially prosperous place on earth for someone with her complexion than anywhere else, okay? And that's no slight to any of my listeners here in Canada or in New Zealand or in, you know, Ireland and London and Australia. Like, we love you guys. But there's nowhere greater, especially from a prosperity standpoint, for black people, for people that look like her, okay? And here's the other thing, is for someone like her, you would think that in the almost week we've had since this all broke, that she would have had some interview with the New York Times or the Washington Post or Vox or somewhere where she actually described how she personally has been oppressed, okay? But all of her answers when she's asked about this country are about the system and systemic racism and blah, 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 and all these other things— but she's it, what it sounds like and what it seems like is she's dependent on the oppression of people that that were oppressed over 150 years ago or maybe as far back as the 60s in this country before the civil rights movement. She's dependent on that oppression, which is becoming more and more common for these people that kind of come out as these overnight civil rights heroes. Right. Is they themselves have not been oppressed in, in any real fashion than any of the rest of us. But they're saying that they are. But their examples are of slavery. And most of them can't point to whether or not their families, their family lineage, their genealogy actually goes back to the African slave trade. They have no clue. Some of them would be astonished to find out that they might be the descendants of black slavers. Right? They might be descendants of the tribes in Africa that were catching the members of their rival tribes and selling them to the slave traders. Right? They don't have any idea. It's a complexion game. It's a melanin game, and they're playing it very, very well. So another thing that we know about Gwen Berry is that she is incredibly lucky to be an American, okay? And I know this is ethnocentric and country sick. I, I get all that. But she's a professional hammer thrower, okay? How could you possibly be a professional at such a fringe, weird sport as hammer throwing and not live in a great country? I don't get the sense because she has sponsorships and there's been a lot of information coming out about the sponsorships and kind of what she's being paid. She doesn't have another job. Her professional job is to throw a hammer and that's all she has to focus on. I mean, what a great country you can live in where you can survive and thrive doing something so niche. Okay. So there, there's also a quote from her when she was kind of talking about how America keeps black people down quote, it has always, always, always been something I have been very uncomfortable with. I'm glad I'm able to say that without being punished or without being misunderstood. Unquote. Can you imagine how tone deaf of a sentence that is incredibly, incredibly tone deaf because she's right. She lives in a country where she can say these things without being punished for it. I remember this was months ago, but there was a really famous wrestler from Iran who had a lot of, you know, inroads in the wrestling and, and MMA community. And he was executed because he went to a counter government rally, right? All he did was go to a rally similar to what people did. You know, the actual people that did peacefully protest back in 2020. Can you imagine being executed for that? Because people like Gwen Berry are pretending like those things happen in the United States, that you can't be black and make a statement of any kind. Guys, do you know how many countries around the planet that if they pulled something like this, if someone from their country pulled something like this during their trials, they would be black bagged, have a, you know, have a bag thrown over their head. And we'd never hear from these people again, right? The last thing you'd hear from them is the screams from in, inside the van as it screeched off to God knows where, right? She's incredibly, incredibly lucky to be an American. The other thing that we know about her is that she is a child of critical race theory. She's a child of CRT. Now, she's, she's old enough to where I don't think that this would be something that she was taught K through 12, kind of this critical race theory thing, but you don't get the worldview of someone like Gwen Berry and do the things and say the things that she says and does without letting critical race theory be the definitive thing that undergirds your entire worldview. 
And one thing that I need to do a little bit of a better job of is kind of c- contrasting things like CRT and Marxism to the gospel. But that's true of this person. And, and I don't presume to know anything about her personal faith. She has not talked about it publicly that I know of. I certainly haven't seen anything. But how do you get to the point where you hate this country so much, where where your race, the, the level of melanin in your skin is the only thing by which you view the rest of the world? Again, she has not described any personal oppression as being a member of the United States, right? The other thing that we know about Gwen Berry is that she's ignorant. She's very ignorant. She hasn't opened up her mouth that much, but when she does, not a lot of great things come out. So uh, there was kind of some controversy that in terms of why she said the national anthem doesn't really appeal to her. So this was another quote from her. Quote, if you know your history, you know the full song of the national anthem. The third paragraph speaks to slaves in America, our blood being slain all over the floor. It's disrespectful, and it does not speak for black Americans. Okay, so you've heard a lot of this about how the national anthem of the United States is, is you know, racist for all these different reasons. But I have a, a, a nice little excerpt here from Ryan Saavedra over at the Daily Wire. And this was about something that they talked about in terms of the national anthem. So he said this, CNN ran an in-depth analysis on the Star Spangled Banner back in 2018. Yes, CNN, and gave an analysis of the key lines. The third verse of the song, which is no longer part of the song, stated this. And where is that band who so vauntly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more? Their blood has washed out their fool, their foul footsteps pollution. That's the, the line that Gwen Berry's talking about. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the airling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave and the star spangled banner in triumph doth wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Alan Taylor, a Pulitzer Prize winning historian who specializes in American colonial revolution and early republic, told CNN that the line is, quote, isn't meant as pro-slavery language. It's referring to the British poison ground, their polluting presence on American soil, Taylor said, unquote. So again, that is something that a lot of people will throw out. They'll see a meme. They'll see something that a politician says. They'll see something that an influencer says. And they're like, oh, the national anthem is racist without actually fully understanding the context. Because when you just read it deadpan, it's like, oh man, that does sound like that's what it's talking about. Unless you know your history, which apparently this person, this Pulitzer Prize winning historian did know their history. But again, you know, Gwen Berry can't possibly be bothered with that information. Another thing that we know about her is that she's delusional. She is absolutely delusional. Another quote from her. Again, I'm going to use her own words against her here because she's the one that's saying them in public. So here I am to, to judge them. So here's her quote. Quote, my purpose and my mission is bigger than sports. I'm here to represent those who died due to systemic racism. That's the important part. That's why I'm going. That's why I'm here today, unquote. She thinks that throwing a hammer decently well as an Olympic sport and throwing a t-shirt over her head is somehow helping the people that died due to systemic racism. Which you just got to ask, what do you mean? How? So if she's talking about slavery, for people that were were enslaved over 150 years ago and the horrors that were perpetrated against them, which I would never minimize, how is throwing a hammer in 2021 doing anything for them? She's absolutely de- delusional, absolutely delusional when it comes to this. And the last thing that we know about her, she is a brat. She's an absolute brat, which is one of the more common words that I've seen used to describe her because a brat is a spoiled person that expresses no gratitude regardless of their positive circumstances. She has such an incredible life that she's led. I think someone was talking about how the fact that she got a scholarship to go to college. I think it was Southern Illinois or something like that. I don't know if that's D2 or if it's D1 or whatever, but she got a scholarship to be a track athlete in the United States of America, this oppressive, horrible country. She got money to go do a very niche sport And it actually ended up being her profession. She was one of the few NCAA athletes that ended up going pro in what they do, right? But she's somehow oppressed. Now, what you've seen a lot of people talk about is this this line that is thrown around too much, I think, because it's not contextualized. But it's something along the lines of, well, if you don't like it, then get out. Right. That, that's kind of the thing that anytime something like this comes up where someone clearly hates the country that they're representing, it's like, hey, if you don't like it, get out. So people use that a lot, but it's kind of become, it become almost like this thing like, well, if, hey, if you don't like it, get the hell on out. Like it's this thing that's easy to kind of caricaturize. Right. But I do have some questions in reference to that for Gwen Berry. Right. If I were interviewing her, of course, she would never take an interview like this. But 
for the people that are saying things like that, they lead to these questions. Okay. So one question I would ask her is, do you realize that you volunteered for this job to represent the United States of America? You, you volunteered for this job. No one told you to do this, right? You volunteered to become a professional hammer thrower and to represent the United States of America. Like, do you realize that? Because that's an important key here. Because if you don't realize that, then we have something else we need to discuss. I would, also, I would also ask her this. If the United States is so racist and dangerous for people that look like you, why do you live here? Like, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do. If you want to get out, get out. If you want to stay, stay. If you're going to stay, you might as well be respectful. But why would you still live here? If, if you really are so oppressed just because of how you look. That seems like a really dumb thing for someone to do. Wouldn't you use some of your means that you clearly have to make a change? Again, we live in apparently the most racist and dangerous country for people of color in the history of ever, right? I mean, if we're ignorant of history and ever, but why do you still live here? Like, honestly, why? What would keep you here? And I guess another question I would ask her is, why don't you immigrate to another country that isn't racist, systemically or otherwise, and compete for them. I'm sure there are plenty of African countries where you could, you know, pack up your hammer and go compete for them. I mean, why not compete for Sudan or Burundi or Togo or Niger or Somalia or any of those great African countries that are full of opportunities for people like you, right? How about you try out some of those super non-homogenous societies like Denmark and Sweden and Norway? Hopefully you're getting the dripping sarcasm there. But why don't you immigrate to one of those countries? I mean, those are the havens, right? These African countries or, or some of these other countries in, in, in these different areas of Europe, like those are, those are the places that we're supposed to be like, right? Like, why don't you immigrate there? But I, I guess the last question I would ask her if she would ever even answer any of these is, if America is systemically racist and evil towards black people, right? Like, like she says, and a lot of her people say, you know, then why have millions of black Africans immigrated to the United States and millions more wish to do the same? That's kind of an easy proof right there because people in this country are convinced that we are the worst place possible for black people and other people of color. What about the people that are wanting to come here? Whether it's across our southern border, illegally or legally through the other immigration systems, we keep getting people that want to live here that don't look like me. They're not a white guy. Why would they do that? Do they not know that the United States is the worst place to possibly be if you're a person of color? If you have an elevated amount of melanin? Someone should tell them right? Robin D'Angelo, stop writing terrible books. Go around the world. Go on tour. Ibram X. Kendi, go tell these people. Don't just tell us. We know America. Oh man, as an, as an American, I know I'm part of the patriarchy and part of the oppressive culture and that we are the worst place possible to live. If you don't look like me, we need to tell the world guys, maybe hire Gwen Berry, maybe Gwen Berry and Colin Kaepernick can go around the world on tour telling everybody, please don't fill out the paperwork. Please don't come, right? You, you have no idea what you're signing up for. Yes, I know you're living in the streets and, and I know that you're, you're worried about all these, you know, corrupt politicians in their, your country and you're worried about people from rival gangs coming over and stealing your children and taking them out into the jungle and turning them into child soldiers. I know you're worried about those things, but have you ever heard about systemic racism? Yeah, yeah, all those things are bad. You know, having your arms cut off if, if you if you uh, steal something or just to send a message to you and the rest of your tribes people. But, I mean, have you ever heard of George Floyd? I mean, you you think you have it hard. Just wait. Can you imagine living in the suburbs in the United States and someone looks at you funny and you automatically think it's because of the way that you look? I mean, that's a real problem, right? I feel like my head's going to explode because all this is so stupid. I, I can't keep the sarcasm going that much longer, but I will go ahead and give you guys some predictions for the Olympics because I love the Olympics, partially because I'm incredibly patriotic, right? And the United States always tends to do pretty well in the winter games and in the summer games. And so it's really, really fun to watch. I'm very much so looking forward to the Olympics. But as it pertains to this, here are my predictions. Number one, Gwen Berry will 100% be highlighted as Team USA walks around during the opening ceremonies, okay? 
So they're going to highlight, you know, Katie Ledecky and they're going to highlight uh, Simone Biles and they're going to highlight, you know, whoever else. I don't know who the other, you know, famous U.S. athletes are quite yet. You know, NBC hasn't told me the ones yet, but Gwen Berry will 100 percent be highlighted. And guys, I hope I'm wrong on these, but I really don't think I think you can see the writing on the wall. Another prediction I have is NBC will 100 percent do a little mini vignette in prime time, right, about Gwen Berry and then show one of her, you know, lackluster throws. Okay, so they'll do this little vignette and maybe like a five to seven minute thing about how great she is and how, you know, courageous she is. And then they will show one of her throws and it's not even going to be probably in the top 10 of throws from the people that she's competing against. And then everyone's going to kind of move on from there. Okay, another prediction I have is that Gwen Berry will surely do some sort of demonstration. Okay, even though it very, very likely won't be from the medal stand, she's going to do something and that's going to be the leading story right? It'll be on the front page of the New York Times. It's going to be all over Twitter and she's going to be called a hero. And then she's going to get signed to Nike for a multi-million dollar deal for apparently being amazing, right? So that's definitely going to happen. And the last thing I'll I'll talk about in terms of the predictions is the names of the two American athletes, right? That beat her at the U S trials will not be mentioned unless they medal. So I want to go ahead and just mention them, mention them now. So number one, the number one overall person from the United States that's going to compete in the women's hammer throw, right, is Deanna Price. And number two is Brooke Anderson. Okay. You will never hear those names ever again unless they hit the podium. And here's the other thing. If Deanna Price, who is apparently one of the favorites to pay, potentially take the gold medal over there or Brooke Anderson, if they do make the podium, this is one of those sports that would just be kind of like one of those line item things on the bottom ticker as they're showing everything else. Everybody wants to see the 100 meter dash. Everybody wants to see the swimming. Everybody wants to see, you know, you know, the gymnastics. They're not really looking at women's hammer throw. But even if they get a gold medal, it might not be mentioned, right? It may be mentioned on NBC's website or Team USA's website or something like that. But I'll go ahead and wrap up today by saying this. There is a wish that I have here because a lot of people have said this and some people are kind of going back and forth on it. But I 100% believe that she should be kicked off of Team USA. I mean, at the very least, because here's the thing, guys, is this is a pretty easy flow chart. Do you hate the country you're supposedly representing? Yes. You don't get to compete for that country. Like this isn't a hammer throwing league. I forget who said it, but someone came up with a really good thing. That'd be like signing a contract with the New York Yankees, right? And saying, I don't want to wear New York Yankees stuff. I hate the New York Yankees. I won't wear pinstripes. I want to wear Red Sox jersey, right? Or I want to wear no jersey. I just want to put this, you know, orange shirt over my head, right? That doesn't really work. You can't represent the New York Yankees and then not wear pinstripes. That's, That's not really how this game is played, right? But guys, can you name another athlete, prominent or not, from another country that represents that country professionally, but actively hates that country? Can you name one other athlete Because again, you're playing for Team USA. It says USA across your chest. They will hand you a flag of the United States of America if you medal for you to drape over your shoulders, right? You will look up towards your flag as if you win the gold medal, they will play your national anthem. You will sing it and you will cry, right? As is to be expected. Do you know any other person anywhere else in the world that does this because there are plenty of corrupt countries. There are plenty of racist countries because spoiler alert, every single country has racists in it. Right. And according to these people that makes the country itself systemically racist. There are, there are countries that have atrocious things that they do as a country. Right. Think about all the athletes that are going to be competing for team China. Right. Think about all the athletes that are going to be competing for the Sudanese team. Right. These countries that have horrifically bad governments or evil governments or just evil people that are like pseudo governments, right? But these people aren't disrespecting those countries. And most of them would probably say, hey, I love my country. I don't love everything that has been done in the name of my country, but I'm going to go out there. I'm going to run as hard as I can for my country. I'm going to swim as hard as I can for my country. I'm going to jump as high as I can for my country. I'm going to do whatever I can do to bring pride to my country. But somehow... That's too much for Gwen Berry. And I guess we all just get to get popcorn and watch. All right, guys, before we let you go, we are going to do a quick resilience boost. At Undaunted Life, our mission is equipping men to push back darkness with content that forges spiritual, mental, and physical resilience. So I just got to throw this out there to you guys. I am so excited 
uh, for, for all of you to be taking in the content. And I just wanted to thank everyone that started and has already finished our seven part devotional, how to build a godly and manly foxhole. Whether you looked at it here on the podcast feed or you went over to you version or you went over to our website, we just really appreciate you guys. And this is already having an impact. We're already having guys that are making definitive changes to their personal lives and their personal communities to try to develop a foxhole. Like, you know, we're already getting feedback from a lot of different places. So that's a quick resilience boost for you today. I'm just going to leave you at the website. It's undaunted.life backslash donate backslash foxhole. That's how you can get access to the seven day devotional. You can download those files for yourself. Again, all that we ask is for you to donate something to us. We didn't put this behind a paywall, but if this is bringing value to you, then give us a donation commensurate with that level of value. If it's worth 50 bucks to you, if it's worth hundred bucks to you, we would say at least do 10 bucks. But guys, this is having a tremendous impact. Show this content to the people at your church. Show it to your pastor. Show it to whoever the men's ministry person is, right? If, you, if you're just listening to me, I had major air quotes there. But guys, check that stuff out and be sure to let me know how you like it. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening to the podcast. Wherever you're listening to this, please subscribe, rate, and review. If you want me to come speak at your live event or on your podcast, you can just shoot me a message to info at undaunted.life. That's I-N-F-O at undaunted.life. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok and like us on Facebook. You can also check out our website for everything else, including how to donate to keep more content like this coming. That's at www.undaunted.life. We also want to thank the band August Burns Red for allowing us to use their music for our content. The intro outro track on this podcast is their song Cutting the Tide which is off their 10th anniversary re-recording of their album, Leveler. Links are in the description. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Remember, keep pushing back darkness, keep forging spiritual, mental, and physical resilience, keep seeking the Lion of Judah. <laughs>